Hi, today this is just going to be a quick video. This is kind of a re-whitening video. If you've watched any of the other videos in this playlist, you've seen how I've taken yellowed face plates from mostly IM and IMA 3303s and 4406s and some 4006s, I think, and we've done our chemical process to re-whiten them. This is a IM 3303. It's from about 96 or 97. And it was sent in by a fellow named Jim. He lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he sent it in. There isn't anything functionally wrong with the set, but he sent it in to have it rewhitened because they did some kitchen refurbishment and remodeling and it's pretty yellow and looks horrible. So as I have done in the past, here's our test sample. This is a white IC401. It's a little older than this unit, but it is a new old stock one. And you can see the drastic difference between a white and the hugely yellowed faceplate. What made Jim's unit different than most other ones that we get in has to do with the amount of yellowing that it has. In fact, it's so yellowed, and if you have watched any of the other videos, most of the time the insides of the doors are usually still white because they're closed up against the faceplate and they don't get exposed to the UV rays. And usually this area here that sits behind the door, this is usually still fairly white because it's concealed as are these buttons here and all of that. In this case, that's not the case. This is all very yellowed. And you can see it looks really bad. And to sort of show you how bad it really is, you can look at these buttons here, which come through. These buttons are a separate assembly that pop in through the back of the faceplate. And if I take these out, they come out from the back. You might be surprised to see this. So here they are, and the very ends of them are yellow, but if I turn them over, they're very white. And why is that? Because these aren't the one the buttons that came in Jim's set. These are some that I have from another set that we saved because the faceplate was damaged or something, and we save all the little parts if we can. So this is pretty typical. Yellowed on the exposed parts, still pretty white and clean and good looking on the concealed parts. Here's the switch assembly out of Jim's set. And it's yellowed on the front and it's yellowed on the back. And if I hold these two side by side, you can see the dramatic difference between the two. And not surprisingly at all, if we turn his faceplate over, I've already disassembled it all, it's all hugely yellowed on the back. In fact, if I put my fairly pristine white button assembly in, you can see the real difference between the two colors. And here is sort of a close-up of the white button assembly, and you can compare it against the back of the faceplate. This was all white when it was new, and now it's all turned yellow. It's not nearly as discolored as the front, but it is very discolored for something that was closed up inside the wall. Another problem with this particular set has to do with the plastic standoffs. These are the plastic standoffs. These are these stand up off the back of the faceplate. They're molded. They're part of the plastic faceplate, and this is where circuit boards sit over it and then little screws go in through the circuit boards and it's what uh, mounts everything to the back of the faceplate and keeps it all from falling apart and if you look carefully like on the end of this one you can see the end of it right here is a lot more discolored it's a lot darker than it is down here at the bottom and this is from exposure to heat on the main board this is the area where the amplifier is and the big aluminum heat sink and that impacts the plastic here and it makes it somewhat more discolored. So you might be wondering, well, okay, it's all discolored. Why, why are we watching this in a video? Well, because some unusual things happened. This morning at the shop, this was going to be whitened today. It was part of today's work at the, at the shop. I decided I would disassemble it at the office before I brought it here because it would save me a little bit of time when I got here and I would get a jump on things. And because it's so incredibly discolored on the front, where this area is yellowed and the inside of the doors are yellowed, I figured I would take the doors off and do them separately and do the fronts and then do the backs and 
you know, try to make it as good for Jim as I possibly could. So the doors on a 3303, they're what they call breakaway doors. They have molded hinges on the backs of the doors and they snap onto these pins on the faceplate. And if you open them up and just fold them down a little further, they just flex and pop off and there's no, in theory, there's no hinges to break or anything like on the 4006 had with their lifetime hinge. And when I went to take these doors off, what happened was the hinges broke off the bottom of the door because the plastic is so discolored that it's very brittle and they just simply broke off. Now that would be bad except that I have other extra doors that are nearly as yellow as this so we have backup spares which is good but the more I looked at this the more I realized this is not a good candidate to be whitened because it's all in really horrible condition. And let me sort of, sort of show you how, why that, or what that is. So this is the right hand door and you might be able to see right here, one hinge has broken off altogether and these two little bits of the curved parts snapped off when I took the door off the faceplate. But to demonstrate to you how brittle this really is, I can simply take my thumb and do this and snap it off. And I'm not pushing on this super hard. You know, I'm not, I don't have um, the strength of the Hulk here to do this. I'm just putting my finger on it and pushing and they break off. That's how brittle the plastic is. It just totally broke the plastic out and this is now trash. The other problem that brittle plastic creates is if you look at these two standoffs right here, this is a taller one and you can see on the end how it's kind of dark at the end more than it is down here at the base. But if you look at this one down below it, you can see this part of it, this should be a circle or a tube like this one is, and you can see how this side of it has broken away. That broke apart simply by taking the screw out that held that circuit board onto that onto that post. And if you take the screwdriver and put it in this one, that's a little too big, we'll take a smaller screwdriver. If we put it inside the hole and give it a little twist, it just breaks away. While it's not uncommon to maybe have one or two that do this sometimes, especially around the amplifier area, when you have the majority of them break apart, there isn't any way to reassemble the set correctly and the circuit boards aren't going to be held in place properly and yeah, that's a real problem. It's a problem when you ship a unit because things get banged around and things can get damaged and the set's not really assembled correctly when it's like that. When I realized this was not a good candidate for repair, I decided to give Jim a call. When I talked to Jim this morning and I explained what the situation was and what I saw when I take, took the set apart, he also realized that when he had taken it out, he was surprised about how discolored it was behind the doors and on the back of the unit. And he had watched some of my re-whitening videos and he had a pretty good idea of what they look like before we start. I, one of the things I asked him was, I said, is this master station, is it installed in your house on a wall that's common with the exterior of the house? And he said, yes, it is. Also, he said in their kitchen, they have a lot of windows, so it gets a lot of sunlight exposure. And I think what's happened here is that the combination of the excessive sunlight from all the windows and all of the heat that's probably coming through the wall from the outside of the house, since it is Scottsdale, Arizona, and I imagine it gets really, really hot there. It's just the heat has just baked the life out of the plastic. There's just no life left in it at all. It's not really that hard to imagine like this standoff right here which I think you can see this standoff right here if I simply just take it and do this I can just snap it off with my finger the plastic used in a 3303 faceplate is a reasonably pliable material it's not a real brittle plastic and there's just no life left in it anymore in fact what I really wanted to try was to take our right hand door here and all I'm going to do is hold it in my hands like this, and I think I can snap it in half. And there's just nothing left. It's just done. It's toast. I told him, even though I knew that he only wanted to really get it whitened, 
I don't think it's a good candidate. I think it's going to, I don't know how well the whitening is going to work because it's so excessively yellowed. And also there's no life left in it. It's just pretty much done. I told him that I had some already previously whitened face plates. And my recommendation was that he have me put on a new whitened face plate and let's start all over again. And just to show you, here's Jim's 3303. This is in the already have been whitened 3303 faceplate that came out of my stock. All I did was simply transfer over all of the circuit boards and everything from his unit onto the back of the replacement faceplate and you can see the dramatic difference between this and this. I'm not going to take one of these doors and try to snap it in half because that would be a bad idea. This is in really good shape. It functions just fine. It looks like it's brand new and I think Jim's going to be happy with it. And that's the saga of Jim's IM3303 from Scottsdale, Arizona. As much as we are really big on saving everything that we possibly can, that's why I have this. This came out of a damaged faceplate. I don't remember when, what, where, or how, but it did. And I saved it because this is perfectly usable. There's nothing wrong with this. If I put this in a faceplate and do the whitening, the yellow will go away and it's a perfectly good part. That's why we saved this. In the case of Jim's 3303 faceplate, it's going to the dumpster. There isn't any part of it that's really usable. I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can get the inlays peeled off. These are self-stick assemblies and they come, come off and maybe if they do, I'll save those. Other than that, it's worthless. I'm going to send, send it to the trash. Hope you found this interesting. If you have a horribly yellowed faceplate, we can whiten it for you. In extreme cases, we might be able to uh, provide a already whitened replacement faceplate. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you like our videos and learn from them, please subscribe to our channel. That's all for today. See you on the next video. Ha! Ah, I did get them off. See? Peel them off right from here and here. These won't be wasted. These will go in a uh, plastic envelope and one day somebody's going to need one of these and I'll be the guy who has it. You know what they say, waste not, want not. See ya.